Good evening, everyone. This one is uh, AS Level Physics, Unit 2, Topic Wise Question DC Electricity. In this session, I will discuss some questions related to DC electricity. That's the first topic of Unit 2 of IAL Physics. In the first question, which row in the table shows a total resistance if two 5 ohm resistors are connected in series and in parallel? So if we have two 5 ohm resistors and they are connected in series, so the combined resistance in series is the sum of individual resistance. So this is 5 ohms and the other one is also 5. So the sum will be 10. So in series it will be 10 so either c will be answered or d will be answered but what about in parallel like if two or more resistance or resistors are connected in parallel then the combined resistance if it's two then it will be product divided by sum if it is more than two then we can add the reciprocals and then invert so a five ohm resistor and another 5 ohm resistor both are connected in parallel so the combined resistance will be the RT or total resistance it will be product divided by sum but keep in mind this formula is only valid for two resistors if more than two we cannot use this formula so 5 multiplied by 5 divided by 5 plus 5 so 5 multiplied by 5 25 and that divided by 10 so the result will be 2.5 so D is the right answer In question 2, the current potential difference graph for an ideal diode is shown. So this is for ideal diode. The graph has been leveled at three separate points x, y and z. At which point is the resistance of diode is infinite? So or we cannot define that. So how we can work out as we know resistance is voltage divided by current. So when you check the position x, the position x the current is 0. Position y also the current is 0. So R is equal to V divided by the potential is there but the current is 0. So V divided by 0 and anything which is divided by 0 that is infinite. So at position x and at position y both have in both cases the diode is having infinite resistance but point z because there is a certain value of voltage and current so it's a finite so the correct answer is a in question three a copper wire has a cross-sectional area of 5 into 10 to the power minus 7 meters square. There is a current in the wire of 0 0.93 ampere. Copper has 8.4 into 10 to the power 28 conducting electron per meter cube. That's the number of the charge carriers. Value of n. Which of the following gives the magnitude of the drift velocity? So we have the formula I is equals to NAQV. Where I is the current, N is the number of charge carriers per unit volume, A is the area, Q is the charge per electron or charge of the particle which are responsible for conduction, that's electron, and V is the drift speed. So if we, V is the drift speed, we need the drift speed. So it will be I divided by A N A Q. So I is the current which is 0 0.93. N is the number of the charge carrier per unit volume, which is 8.4 into 10 to the power 28, multiplied by area, which is given 5 into 10 to the power minus 7 meters square, multiplied by charge of one electron, which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. So it matches with option. In question 4, a 
negative temperature coefficient thermistor is connected in series as shown. The temperature of thermistor is increased. Which row of the table shows how the reading of voltmeter 1, V1 and V2 and current changes? So what is the relation between the temperature and the resistance for thermistor? They are inversely proportional. So if the temperature is increased, the resistance of thermistor will decrease. And because it's a voltage divider circuit, so if the vol resistance here decreases, the voltage here will decrease in comparison because the total sum of V1 and V2 will be constant. So if V1 value is decreasing, V2 value will increase. And what about the current in the circuit? Because the combined resistance will be the sum of resistance of thermistor plus the resistance of fixed resistor. So resistance of thermistor is changing. The fixed resistor is constant. As its combined resistance is R1 plus R2, so value of R1 is decreasing, so combined resistance will also decrease. So if the combined resistance decreases, the value of the current will increase. So A is the right answer that value of V1 will decrease, value of V2 will increase, and the reading of the ammeter will also increase as the total resistance of a circuit is decreased. This is a structure question related to DC electricity. A car battery is constructed using six cells connected in series with a com combined EMF of 12V. What is meant by the term EMF, electromotive force? So what is the definition of electromotive force? It is work done per unit charge or work done to unit charge so the work done to move or uh, moving unit charge around the complete circuit. That is known as electromotive force or EMF. The next question, a student sets up the circuit as shown using the car battery. The student adjusted the variable resistor until the reading on the voltmeter is 11.81. The reading on the ammeter is 9.83. Calculate the internal resistance. So, this is the EMF. We know voltage here, the external voltage that is 11.81, and we know the current in the circuit that is 9.83 amps. So, the formula which relate the external voltage in and total EMF with voltage drop internally that EMF is equals to V plus because EMF is a total voltage V is external voltage plus IR voltage drop internally so we have this uh, 9.83 this is 11.81 the current is uh, 9. sorry the total EMF is 12 by mistake I wrote 9.83 So total, this is EMF is 12, 11.81, current is uh, 9.83 and resistance R is there. So it will be 12 minus 11.81 divided by 9.83. That will give us the value of internal resistance, which will come out as 0 0.0193 ohms. The next question, the student adjusted the variable resistor several times and record a corresponding values for ammeter from the ammeter and voltmeter. Describe how the values can be used to determine the internal resistance of the battery using graphical method. So what we will, what student should do? So it should, student should plot a graph 
between voltage on y axis and current on x axis so this will uh, this is how the graph will appear then the y intercept this y intercept when the current is zero the maximum voltage will be there that will give us the emf so maximum voltage of the cell that is given by the y intercept and the gradient will be my negative internal resistance as we know emf is equals to ir plus v or v plus ir when we compare with the equation of straight line when we rearrange the equation we can say v is equals to minus ir plus emf then we'll compare y is equals to mx plus c so y axis we have voltage x axis we have uh, the current so our gradient will be minus r and the y intercept is equals to emf next question with use the internal resistance of a battery will increase eventually the power available from a battery will become too small to be useful the student calculated the power available from battery of 9 volts and internal resistance 0.1 uh, ohm when connected to 5 ohm resistor he concluded that when the internal resistance had risen to 0.5 the power dissipated and the 5 ohm resistor would reduce to 70% of its original value. Determine whether the student conclusion is correct. So how we can work out whether the student conclusion is correct for part C. So we know power P is equals to I square R. And we want to explain the idea that the internal, uh, the external power has reduced to 70%. So P is equals to I square R. So in the beginning, the 9 volt EMF is there and the internal resistance is 0 0.1 when a 5 ohm resistor is connected. But then he concluded that when the internal resistance rise to 0 0.5. So what we will do, basically the current in the circuit will change. We will have two currents. So example, we have a 5 ohm resistor and this is 0 0.5 ohm, uh, 0 0.1 ohm in the beginning, internal resistance and the EMF is equals to 9V. Then what happened? The internal resistance has changed to 0 0.5 ohms. So this one is 0 0.5 ohm, this is again 5 and EMF is equals to 9. So first what we will do, we will find the current in this circuit, the first circuit and how we can find the current. So current is V is equals to IR, so I is equals to V divided by R. So that will give us, we have the voltage 9 and what about the combined resistance 5 plus 0 0.1 so it will be 5.1, this will be 5.19 divided by 5.1 this will give us 
the current that is 9 divided by 5.1 is equal to 1.76. So 1.76 ampere is the current in this circuit. And when we find the current in the second circuit, again that will be EMF divided by combined resistance. The total voltage is 9 and the total resistance is 5.5. So 9 divided by 5.5 that will give us 1.63. 1.63 ampere. So this is having 1.63 amperes. Now, when we find the power here, P is equals to I square R. So power of this circuit, the circuit one, in which P is equals to I square R. So 1.76 square multiplied by resistance that is 5. So 1.76 square multiplied by 5, this will give us 15.548, so 15.5 watts. And we find the power for circuit 2. P is equals to I square R, so the circuit 2, the current is 1.63 square multiplied by resistance 5. So 1.63 multiplied by 5, so it will give us 15.5 and this power will be 13.2 so 13.2 divided by 15.5 that is the total change in the power for because in the question he concluded that when internal resistance has risen to 0 0.5 the power dissipated in a 5 ohm will reduce to 70 percent of its original value so when we calculate in original power initial power was 15.5 and the final power when we are calculating for circuit 2 that is coming out 13.2 watts. So what is it for change in the power? That is 13.2 divided by 15.5 into 100. So it will come out as a 86 percent. So students suggestion that it reduce to 70 percent but it does not reduce to 70 percent. So student statement is not true with reference to the values. Moving on to the next question. Which of the following statement about the physical quantities or units is correct? Current is a derived quantity that's wrong. It is the standard uh, SI base quantity. Power is a derived quantity. That's true. Coulomb is a base unit. Coulomb is a derived unit. Volt is a base unit. Volts is also a derived unit. So these are the right answers. So question 7, which electrical component has the current voltage graph as shown? So what is happening here because when current is on y axis and voltage on x axis, so slope is reciprocal of resistance. So here the slope is increasing, it means the resistance is decreasing. And which component the resistance decreases when we increase, when the temperature or voltage increase here? So that is the thermistor. Because when the charges are passing through, so the temperature increase. As the temperature increase, its resistance will decrease. And the resistance decrease, it means the slope should increase. In question 8, a small metal cube with side of length x is connected uh, in a circuit. The current through a cube between the two opposite faces is I. The potential across the cube is V. Which of the following give the resistivity? So it's a cube and all the sides of the cube are x. So this one is x, x, x. 
So the formula which relate resistance with resistivity R is equal to L by A. And the formula which will relate voltage and current with resistance of V is equal to IR. So R is equal to V divided by I. So when we compare the two equations, we can say V divided by I is equal to rho length is X and the area X into X, so it will be X squared. So this will cancel with X will go there in multiplication, so it will be Vx divided by I. So it matches with option A. So for question 8, A is the right answer. Two copper wires are placed in series in a complete circuit. The electron in two wires have different value of the drift velocities. Which of the following must be different for having a different uh, for the two wires? So there is a different drift velocities and two copper wires. So when they mention two copper wires are there, it means they should have the same charge carrier because the material is same, so value of n will be same. So If they are connected in series, so when they are connected in series, in series the current is same. So there cannot be current. Then the factor on which the drift velocity actually depends, we have the formula I is equals to N A Q V. So basically drift velocity depends on the area through which it is passing. So current is same, chamber of charge carrier is same, Q is constant. So the thing which is different is the cross-sectional area. So V is a right answer. In question 10, the circuit shown as a potential divider including a battery of negligible resistance, a light dependent resistor or LDR and a potential PD across is measured using a voltmeter. Which of the following statement about the circuit is correct? If the resistance of LDR is half, the voltmeter reading will be half. That's not true. Why that's not true? Because if both have the same resistance, because they are in series. So if both have the same resistance, then the voltage divide will be same. But if this resistance is half, so the voltage will always divide in ratio. So that's why this is not the correct statement. Increasing the light, light intensity would decrease the voltmeter reading. If you increase the light intensity, the resistance here will decrease the so voltage across LDR will decrease in comparison. Voltage across fixed resistor increase because it's a series circuit in which the voltage divide or sum of two voltages will be same. So if the value of V1, if the, I said this is V1, this is V2. So value of V1 is decreasing, the value of V2 should increase so that the sum will remain. Well, so that's not the right statement. Increasing the light intensity would have no effect. That's wrong as well. The voltmeter reading added to potential across LDR will always be 12. That's true because when we add the reading across the voltmeter of fixed resistor and LDR, the total sum will be equal to the EMF if we neglect the internal resistance. In question 11, a student is given the circuit diagram as shown. Calculate the value of the voltmeter reading. So this is a voltage divider circuit. How we can find the value of the voltmeter reading? So the formula which relates is, uh, if I say this is V1 and this one is V2. So V1 is equal to resistance of that part divided by sum of the resistance of the circuit into combined voltage V. So that is 55 kilo, 12 and 55 kilo, uh, 12 kilo ohm and 55, so 55 into the power 3 plus 12 into the power 3 into combined voltage, the combined voltage is 1.5. So this will give us the value of V1 at reading on voltmeter. So that will come out as 
The student set up the circuit and observed that the reading on the voltmeter is lower than the value calculated in A. So in practical, he's not getting the same answer like 1.23, this answer. But in practical, the reading of the voltmeter is less than what he calculated. So what could be a reason for that? Because what we neglect here in a circuit, we take an ideal condition that the component, the wire, the connection wire are not having any resistance. But in practical, they also have resistance or the cell might have internal resistance to some of the voltage drop internally. So what could be the two reasons why the value might be lower than the expected value? Number one is the resistance of connection wire. And what will be the effect of uh, this resistance of the connection wire? So there will be some voltage drop. Across the wires. And the second. The internal resistance of the cell is neglected here. So cell will have internal resistance. So the terminal voltage is less than 1.5 Four identical resistance the resistors are shown A, B, C, and D are placed in a circuit as shown. Determine the power dissipated in each of these resistors, and it's of six marks. So basically, to get the power dissipation, we know she should note the current. Each resistance is two ohm. So this one is two, 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 and two. So first we will find the combined resistance of the circuit. So these two are in series. So this will be 2 plus 2, 4. And this is in parallel. So it will be product divided by sum. I'm solving it here on the left hand side. So two and two are connected in first in series. So two plus two, four and four and uh, two are in parallel. So it will be product divided by sum. So four multiplied by two divided by uh, four plus two or two plus four. That will be 1.33. And that 1.33 because it's combined 1.33 is in series with two. So the combined resistance of a circuit will be 1.33 plus two. That will be equal to 3.33 ohms. So the total current in the circuit V is equal to IR. So I is equal to V divided by R. The combined voltage of a circuit is 10 and the total resistance is 3.33. So the total current is 3 amperes. So the total current which entered the circuit is 3 amps because we'll use the formula P is equals to I H square R to get the power but what about the current in this branch because in parallel the current divide so current will divide between these two components uh, between the two branches and what will be the division so according to the resistance it will divide so this resistance is 4 ohm and this resistance is 2 ohms. So how we can find the current which is passing through 
this side so either we can find the voltage as it is of 6 marks like we we know the combined resistance of this part as a current will divide between the 3 ampere will divide accordingly this is this branch less resistance so more current will be there this will have more resistance so less current will be there so the current through d current through D will be equal to 2 by 3 of 3 amperes which is equal to 2 amps. So if 2 amp is passing through 2 amp is passing through this one so remaining 1 ampere will pass through the other branch and then we'll find the power for each for A, for power we'll use I square R, so for A it will be 3 square multiplied by 2, 3 square is 9 multiplied by 2, that's equal to 18 watts. For D it is 2 square multiplied by the, uh, the resistance, that's 2, 2 square is 4 multiplied by 2, so that is 8 watt. For B and C will have the same power because they, are, they have the same current and resistance, so the current is 1 square multiplied by resistance 2, so that is equal to 2 watt. And for C also, it will be 1 square multiplied by 2, that's also equal to 2 watt. So this is the power which is dissipated across each resistor in the circuit. The next part. Explain without further calculation what would happen to power dissipated by resistor A if the resistor D was disconnected. So if we remove the resistor D, it means all will come in series. So if all will come in series, the total resistance of a circuit, what will happen? The total or the combined resistance of a circuit will increase. As the combined resistance of a circuit will increase, the current in the circuit will decrease, so the power dissipation will be less. Because originally, when we calculated the current, the current was coming out 3 amps. But this is without calculation, we don't have to do calculation. Originally, the current was 3 amp and D was there. But now, when 2 ohm, 2 ohm, and 2 ohm are connected in series the combined resistance is 6 so the current will be uh, 10 divided by 6 which is equals to 1.6 so the current in the circuit is approximately half so if the current so basically removing or disconnecting d will increase the total resistance of a circuit which reduce the current and the power dissipation So it will increase the total circuit resistance which reduce the current and power dissipation. If the resistor in the circuit used in a wire replaced with a filament lamp the resistance of each lamp would be different depending on the potential across it. Explain in terms of particle why the resistance of filament increases as the potential across the filament lamp increases. So if, as we increase the voltage, the resistance of a filament lamp changes. So what could be a reason? So basically as we increase the potential,
the current will increase and as the current through a lamp will increase there will be more collagen between electrons and letters uh, or the ions present and that the ions will move faster uh, vibrate faster and current is having a heating effect so as the current increase it will heat up filament so the sequence should be because that's when current increase the filament temperature increases more collagens will be there the lattice vibration or at ions vibration increase That's why the resistance is increased. In question 13, uh, the unit of power is what? Which of the following is uh, included in SI base unit of the power? So power, what is power? Basically power is work done per unit time or it is joules per second and joules itself it is newton meter and newton is kilogram meter per second square si because which of the following include did in the si base unit so this is a drive unit this is a, also a drive unit so either b will be answer or d but when we write for power as we know power is equals to what the unit of power or it is joules per second joules is newton meter per second and newton itself is kilogram meter per second square this will be multiplied by meter and second. So when we solve kilogram meter square second raised to power three or kilogram meter square second minus three. The base unit involved kg, not ampere. So B is the right answer. Question 14. The diagram shows a com combination of three resistors X, Y, and Z. Which of the following gives the total resistance? Because first they are in parallel, so it will be product divided by sum. So it will be y multiplied by z divided by y plus z. And then that is added to x. So product divided by sum and then added to x. So c is the right answer for question 4D. In question 15, the diagram represents or shows a circuit used to determine the internal resistance and EMF. Corresponding potential V and I were taken and adjusted. A graph was plotted on V on Y axis and current on X axis. So this time the current is on X axis and voltage is on Y. Which of the following is correct? The area underneath the graph is a total energy dissipated that to, that does not give because area will be product and that will be the power. The gradient of the graph is R. Gradient is not R, it is minus R. And the graph shows V and I are directly proportional. No, that will have a linear relation but not a direct proportional because as the voltage is uh, decreasing, terminal voltage, the, current is increasing. Y intercept shows the EMF that's true. So the Y intercept the maximum value is the EMF. Question 16. The diagram shows a circuit determine the internal resistance, the resistance of, of variable resistor which of the following gives the current in the cell. So how we can work out the current in the cell we have the formula EMF is equals to IR. plus i and capital R. So if I take i common, so EMF is equals to i R plus capital R. 
और ई एम एफ डिवाइड बाई आर प्लस कैपिटल आर बिकॉज द टोटल करंट इज टोटल वोल्टेज डिवाइड बाई टोटल रेजिस्टेंस दैट इज इक्वल्स टू मैच विद ऑप्शन सी सो दीज आर सम क्वेश्चन डिस्कस फ्रॉम वन टू सिक्सटीन रिलेटेड टू यूनिट टू टॉपिक डी सी इलेक्ट्रिसिटी द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन आर डिस्कस मोर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस असाइनमेंट